My name's Chris Webb. Um, I'm the co-founder of a company called Foresight Augmented Reality from Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm going to talk to you all for a few minutes about um, accessibility. And I think it's a little different than some of the great things we've heard today. Um, we're not going to talk about accessing um, securely a lock or anything like that, but we're going to talk about providing accessibility for everybody, including people with disabilities, and how we're le uh, leveraging the Legic 6000 series module with our technology to make that happen. Um, first off, how do we do what we do right now? So what we do right now is we're using micro locations to provide um, navigation assistance and d audio descriptions video descriptions, haptic feedback descriptions to people with disabilities to give them more context of the environment that is around them. Um, we're doing this with Bluetooth low energy beacons, um, ultra wideband technology, and um, geofences in larger situations as well. This is great when you're talking about a smaller building and environments. But when you're talking about something bigger like a hotel where you have a lot of micro locations you want to set up, like every door in a hallway, it becomes kind of an infrastructure problem to install all these beacons. So we are looking and working with the Legix 6000 series and their beaconing functionality to replace the use of these Bluetooth low energy beacons so that we don't have this infrastructure that we have to install. We can utilize any product out there that has the Legix 6000 series with Bluetooth and the beaconing capability to provide these micro locations. The disability community is huge. People don't realize it. According to the World Health Organization, there's over a billion people on the planet with some sort of disability. And that doesn't mean they have a disability. That's a huge challenge because that is a large number that they have there. But there are a lot of people that uh, can't get around, can't see, have cognitive disabilities, hearing impairments, use a wheelchair. And for these people, the most important thing for them to understand is the environment around them for their safety, for their independence, for their confidence. How are we doing this? So we're utilizing, um, you know, like I said, currently we're utilizing Bluetooth low energy beacons. That's our main go-to device. Like I said, we've used ultra wideband to help people locate autonomous vehicles, but our focus is the Bluetooth low energy. So the Legic 6000 series has the ability to do beaconing. And the beaconing allows us to send small Bluetooth low energy packets with our custom configuration at a particular interval and a particular power. And the goal is to have the interval and the power set to where you need it so that you're not chewing up unnecessary battery. Um, low energy Bluetooth does not draw a lot of power, so it works really, really well. Um, we're utilizing that to provide these micro locations for infrastructures that are already installed. With that, we can tell somebody about the environment around them, safety around them, um, you know, uh, hallways, where the hallway is, where to turn to get here and there. We're not trying to provide point-to-point -point navigation because when somebody has a disability, that's a really big challenge. Um, but we are trying to enhance their mobility skills utilizing this technology. We can provide real-time assistance, and by real-time assistance, what I really mean is real-time information, um, bus schedules. We have a lot of our equipment installed on bus stops, so we can provide real-time bus information, live menus for restaurants. We could have a schedule from, from this facility. If it changed, we could have that in real-time all through our APIs. We're basically taking a building and bringing it into the world of IoT um, through our smartphone app and our back-end system. All this is configured through our web portal. It's all very, very easy to do. Um, this provides real benefits to people with disabilities. And, and the key one, there's two key ones here. That being safety, um, knowing your real-time location is huge. My business partner, Dave Furukawa, who you may have seen walking around, he's the blind gentleman with the cane. I'll tell you a story about him just yesterday. We were in our hotel in Old Town Zurich, and he comes out of his room and to the right of him is an elevator. But right past the elevator is this huge wide staircase that goes down to the lobby. He came within two steps of tumbling down that staircase because he didn't know it was there. 
if we had this stuff installed in that hotel in their locks that are already on their doors or even through our beacons, he would have been notified of that hazard right by him and not almost tumbled down the stairs. We got very lucky. So knowledge is safety. Knowing your environment is safety. Um, also, knowing your environment allows you to self-navigate around a place, a business, a building, a hotel, which provides independence and it provides confidence. And the reason you don't see a lot of these billion people with disabilities out and about is because they don't have the independence or the confidence to go out. Most of them rely on other people to take them where they need to go. They don't want to do that. They want to be able to do these things on their own, and we help do that with this digital technology. Um, some of the things we also do is access to information, signage, um, schedules, menus. We can bring all that in to a digital accessible environment through audio, text, video, however, however people need it provided. Um, signage is an interesting one. If you think about a hotel, you look at a hallway and you know, it might say rooms 100 through 110 to the left, you know, 120 to 130 to the right, and then it has braille on it. Well, that's great. What, what good is braille if you don't know the sign is there? If you're blind, you don't know the sign is there. The braille is there to check a box on a government form. And we're in 2023 in digital technology can solve that problem. For a business, why would you wanna buy products that have this integrated? Well, you're opening up to a broader customer base. You're basically marketing to these billion people. And the one thing you learn about the disability community is they're extremely loyal. Once you earn their business, they're coming back and they're bringing their friends and they're bringing their family. And you don't have to provide them the same assistance that you do now, because right now, if you go to a hotel, for example, you're going to have to get somebody to help you to your room, find your location. Maybe even if you want to go down for breakfast, call them, say, come up and get me. And, and you know, it takes away from the, the experience for the other customers in the hotel, and it takes time for the employees. Um, and you're, going to, you know, you're getting ahead of the game when it comes to accessibility. Government regulation is starting to catch up to where we are in technology, but it's not there but you can get ahead of that game. And again, customer loyalty, it's an underserved market. And then as, as a product manufacturer, you're getting a huge marketing advantage because you can go out and when you're bidding on a project, you can say, hey, our project is fully accessible. It can provide all these accessibility features because we've integrated this FAR technology along with this Legix 6000 series module. And my competitors, they can't do that. You know, your competitors can't do that. So you've got a marketing advantage. Um, we thought the best way to kind of demonstrate this, because I can talk about it all day long, but it's best if you see it. So we created this video. Um, it's one of our users, Scott. He's been using our technology for about six years. He was uh, born blind. He, has, he was born with no eyes. He's got glass eyes. Um, and he just thinks it's phenomenal. We, we, we set up some of our, our beacons in a hotel, showed him how it would work, and then we kind of did a video and a simulation to kind of show you all. So. Let's uh, see if that will start. The creation of the company was started from the legacy of the sacrifice of my guide dog. Tragically died sacrificing his life to save my four-year-old son from a car. It was the result of that tragic accident brought my business partner, Chris Webb, and he and I brainstormed on solutions on how to provide augmented information to increase safety for those moving around the environment. Accessibility is extremely important. It always has been, but we're at a point now where technology can really make a difference in people's lives. With what they're doing to implement FAR and to make it into basically a streamlined app, it's really just getting easier and easier to navigate not only through the app, but then to navigate through the options the app has and to find what you need to find to make yourself travel as safely and as securely and promptly as possible. When somebody's visually impaired looking for their hotel room, they tend to walk down the hallway, feel for the braille signs or feel for a number on the door. Braille signs are great if you read braille, but not many people read braille nowadays. And then you also, how do you know where a braille sign is? It's hard to find. It's very slow and time consuming. So with our system, utilizing our smartphone app, somebody who has a visual impairment can walk down a hallway and the app can tell them what room they're passing. So as they're walking down the hallway, it would say room 1702, room 1704, 
room 1706. And that way they know where they are in the hotel as they walk around and can find their room much more easily. I can hear what room numbers I'm passing, which of course is kind of important when you're trying to find your room. You also hear things like if you're passing an ice machine, whether you're passing an emergency exit, which of course is very good information to have. And then when I get to my room is the best part because I can stand there at the door of the room and far vision will tell me things like when you walk in the door, the bathroom is ahead to your left at nine o'clock, a bed at 12 o'clock, and coffee maker one o'clock 20 feet. There's a lot of devices out there that already work with what we're developing so we are integrating with those so that we can roll out our technology without having to install an infrastructure. All done through a website uh, only takes a couple of minutes so there's not a lot of work to get this working in a business. It's a big game changer to be able to do this. I mean this is something that you would never have been able to do before the Far Vision app came along. Providing accessibility and inclusion for those of us that are disabled is almost a necessity. We're adding an extra layer of safety, but also providing an extra layer of information that increases someone's self-confidence, which then leads to greater independence. So that's the gist of how our system works. So the disability community, just to, to close out, represents, according to, to research, and it sounds like a huge number, and it was actually a bigger number than this, but I reduced it because it just sounded so absurd. But they say it's over a trillion dollars of purchase power by the disability community. And creating products that start accessible from the beginning is extremely important because you're going to have to get there eventually, and you can really give yourself an advantage over your competitors. At the same time, you're doing the right thing and providing the technology that people need to have better enhanced lives. Um, where we are on that, we are in the process of creating our SDK for iOS and Android so that, you know, Scott mentioned the Far Vision app. That's our current app. We have some other custom apps out there already, but we're creating an SDK so that anybody can integrate our technology into their own app because everybody's going to want their own branding. Uh, we're going to be working on some custom code for the Legix 6000 series. We've, we've done the testing. We've got it uh, working well. It's actually quite, quite amazing. Um, and then we're shooting for a timeline of the third quarter of 2024 to have this ready. So that's, uh, that's what we're working on. And I appreciate your time. Thank you.